Okay, everybody. So I think we'll make, make a start to uh, this session, uh, this fun session, I have to say, on, on serious gaming for policymaking and, um, and low mobility. And in this session, we are going to be demonstrating to you kind of the value of um, games as a serious policy, ser games as a serious policymaking tool. Um, so my so my name's James Cleave. I am the founder and director of Mobility Lab in the U in the UK, um, and I am basically I'm going to be here presenting this session to with uh, with good friends uh, uh, Shafak and Yot from from Numo. Um, I'm just going to ask you both to introduce yourself. So uh, uh, Shafak, can you introduce yourself, please? Absolutely. Good afternoon, everyone. My Shafak Chaudhry. I am the Senior Manager of Pilots and Engagement at the New Urban Mobility Alliance, also known as NUMO. Hi, good afternoon and good morning to some folks uh, on the West Coast. My name is Jyot Chada uh, and I'm the Deputy Director of NUMO, Shafak's colleague. Remind me that we are, do have people well, um, good morning, good afternoon, and what is appropriate for yourselves, really? By way of housekeeping, so just to let you all know that each urbanism next year is recorded. We may make it available after the session, both for yourselves and also for others who are able to attend. And everybody's convenient, everybody's foot. Uh, we do I will apologize now for like a train or something which will happen in the background. I do apologize. I'll keep my microphone muted. Um, so just to those of you who have not had the chance to use um, use uh, use Hopin before, um, so so in this session, what we are asked to do is on the right. So on the right hand side of your screen, you should have both an events tab and a sessions tab. So please click on the set on the session tab because we're going to be using the chat function a lot. In that, we want you to write your comments. We want you to also back on an activity. We shall be doing uh, throughout this session as well. So uh, um, it's important that you tab because everybody in the event will be no um come know your comment. So um just to be that clear. Um, we won't be planning to run this session, but in case any any future sessions do actually run any polls, you are asked to submit your answers in that appropriate tab there. We're all again. We're also not going to be utilising the moderated Q and A. Q and A. But if you do want to ask a question of of ourselves at any point, and use the Q and A function. In our case, you can also then use the use the chat tab as well. You can also see who is actually attending this on the people tab, and it will it will refresh whenever and anybody everybody new comes in or anybody leaves. There is what you can also do. There's two ways which you can maximize your screen. So, firstly, arrow in the top right, uh, so top right of your screen, um, and hides the chat that hides that, um, that column on the right hand side, or you can just click on the full screen item to get the full, full screen experience. Um, so that's gonna re, yep, so obviously. That's the housekeeping. Um, so before we actually get on to uh, the session where you're actually going to get a chance to play a few of the games which we created, um, I'm just kind of inter interested in Shafak and, and Yacht. So, also, well, I suppose kind of what's the best way to, what's the best way to ask it, really? It's um, what was kind of the inspiration behind... Well, first of all, can you actually explain... Um, Introduced the games which you created, and what was really the in, the inspiration behind using gaming actually as a, a policy making tool? Sure. So I'll jump right in here. Um, I think 
first and foremost, uh, the idea of gaming, the idea of equipping uh, policymakers and uh, stakeholders, residents uh, at every level to be able to reimagine public space um, as it is, is truly one of the indicators that we're trying to proactively get people to be more innovative, to be more imaginative. And first and foremost, just thinking about how is this approachable? These are big daunting concepts uh, when it's related to cities and how they are, they're managed and operated on a day to day. So oftentimes there's that level of frustration that why aren't we doing things differently? Well, if we wanna do things differently, let's also equip folks with um, the type of tools and really, in a sense, uh, help them put their guard down so that they can uh, tap into that more open-minded approach uh, towards uh, how they can potentially bring together some new proposals and new ideas to help uh, reimagine and shape the city. And, sorry, go on, sorry. <laughs> And I was just going to add to that. I think that that's totally correct, Shafat. I was also thinking about, you know, some of the other ways in which we learn. And you touched on, I think, an important point about being in a mindset that is is open or even vulnerable to learn. I'd also bring out maybe another point, which is around sort of the power of storytelling. And not to say that all games have an element of storytelling in that moment. Some can be quite competitive um, where you're just doing, you know, quick, almost like reactions. Um, but I, I think that storytelling when incorporated into this work that we're try trying to do in cities allows for um, real world complexity to be talked about in simple ways where not everything needs to be resolved in recognition of some of the, the challenges that sort of exist in, in, in the day-to-day -day world and, and still playing the game and maybe trying to win or trying to reach some collective goal perhaps through that complexity. And that's, that's I think, one of the, the big strengths of uh, taking such an approach. I think also, especially if you can build upon a little bit that idea a little bit come around complexity and you know trying to trying to break stuff down is i suppose i, I kind of approached it when i was kind of creating the the card game which we'll come on to later on um from um also from an approach or actually approach of a policy maker because I, i've previously been a, a policy maker in here in the uk and i think of things logically and there's there's obviously a great value to that. So, you know, you've got to base your policy upon evidence, you've got to do some detailed analysis, you've got to have a, an indication of what it's going to be. But when it comes to actually deploying things in real life, people are complex and people obviously don't think, sometimes don't think and don't act rationally. And the way which we can then use games is policymakers to actually explore that angle a bit more and and just like a little bit of insight to what policies we are actually going to do. Okay, we, so let's say we may think, let's say closing a street, you know, it'll make all sorts of difference for, you know, um, reducing carbon emissions and encouraging people to use the bike, encouraging people to walk. Um, we actually in the position of other people. And what we can then do is really understand the implications of of what we're doing from different perspectives and it is, it's an incredibly kind of powerful tool and i suppose you, i don't know whether you, you both have come come across this barrier of people seeing games as not serious even though they do do have a role role to play i don't know if either of you experienced that barrier at all but um it's very overcoming it I mean, I, I can jump in there. That's, I think, uh, uh, an interesting point about how do you try to get people to wear different hats through the purpose of playing through uh, playing a game. Um, in terms of barriers, to to be honest, I haven't seen as many barriers to breaking out a game at. Uh, you know, maybe not a meeting with ministers, but who knows? Maybe someone should try. But at least at at workshops. Um, 
Because I think as soon as people get that that physicality of the game in their hands, I think something magical happens where you say, okay, I'm going to test this and maybe maybe it'll be interesting and maybe not. So I, I haven't seen too much of that resistance. What about you, Shafak? I'll just build on that point. Um, when we usually plan uh, urban planning, transportation policy type of meetings through the public sector, we're already prepared bringing those heavy duty maps, maybe some visions that have been articulated by some key stakeholders in the community and asking the public to engage with those maps. So that essentially inserts people right into where it is that we're trying to reimagine and bring some new ideas into um, into that particular city or municipality. I think the games really allow uh, people to take that a step further where, okay, it might seem too serious right now that we're jumping right into maps, that we're trying to put in some input that could potentially turn into something that is unknown. So let's be a little bit playful around it, uh, but also in the end, sort of tie the uh, tie together the dots, um, so to speak, and and see how this could end up informing uh, some form of policy. Uh, but just as Joth is saying, I think when people are coming to workshops and we so badly wish we could have been running this session in person with all of you right now, uh, you already see sort of this um, desire to be uh, challenged, educated, in a sense, a little bit entertained too. I, I know uh, that we would sometimes in the workshops that we planned in the evenings, we're up against um, some popular shows that, or, or TV sporting events that are coming up. So it's great to be able to bring people into the room and say, you know what, we're, we're really thoughtful. We're, we want to be able to really engage you, insert you into these um, decisions that are being made, um, you know, irrespective of, of, of whether you participate. So it's essential that we hear your input and it's essential that we also get uh, various stakeholders that are working in different um areas of, of transport policy to sit together at the table and start uh, coming uh, and, and envisioning new goals and new sets of priorities for, for the respective city. Um, hearing Shafak, it makes me think, James, that Shafak and I have both strong-armed people that we've played the game with to be enthusiastic about it. <laughs> so, but I'm interested in in just maybe spending a minute more on your question about barriers, you know, you've had so much experience with policy from the policy making side. Um, what sort of barriers do you see in terms of gaming being taken as a serious route to to um, policy? I suppose, but the primary barrier for me can, really comes in terms of mindset because policy makers, and obviously, when we're polls, we think we try and think through things in a very logical and evidence-based manner which again i've, I've said it's very you know it's very logical and, and it's important that we do that but what that then means is that a little bit of like blindness to um almost, almost like a blindness like to how the world works in some ways because you, you know you see like the world in like a little um you know people think can act rationally and there's an effect and those those sorts of things and overcome that issue of yeah there are wider dynamics or there are other things which have an impact upon what you do which you don't really control which you to explore and frankly well frankly for me the the best way which we've actually got people to explore explore it in some cases in, in more two cases is to literally force them to play the game and to actually see and you know, see the value of actually playing these games and trying to challenge their thinking a little bit trying to challenge their thinking a little bit more um but it's it is to overcome um just kind of thinking logically and things fix is very good but um so there's a lot in that. <laughs> Absolutely, James. And just hearing you talk about barriers, I keep thinking about um, what is bringing people to the table to begin with? What are the existing transportation barriers, the existing, in, existing excuse me, 
inequities and challenges that we're facing. So um, maybe just to take a step back before jumping into the imagination aspect of what's possible, we can come together and anchor ourselves in what's not working, what does need to change, what is archaic transportation policy, and in a sense, what we've uh, experienced at, at NUMO through uh, seeing how uh, new mobility has disrupted uh, the, the public sphere and, and, uh, and cities, how it became sort of this combative reactionary mode. And that was a reflection of where transportation currently, um, transportation policy currently is at. So maybe before um, coming up against people resisting the idea of let's be uh, imaginative, let's think about what could be rather than what is, uh, we also can agree upon what's not working for us. Very, very true. Um, my, I suggest be the best games is to learn about them and to play them. Um, and rightly uh, said, to have this in person. Uh, in fact, when we come originally submit, we're really looking forward to the in person. But alas, the world is is as it is, and so actually, uh, but. Uh, don't worry, we've still got some, and we're going to ask you all to participate as well. So, uh, can, you know, I believe you're you're going to kick kick off. I believe it's street mix. So you're able to explain about it and people. Sure. Yes. Let's dive into uh, the actual games and remove the mystery of what are. Um, these games that Numo has been up to uh, in the recent years. So Isabel, if I could just have you uh, share the screen with the presentation. Okay, brilliant. So I will be kicking us off. Um, we'll be essentially structuring uh, this session around three games. Right now I just have the two listed here that Joth and I are going to dive into with all of you. And then James will come in for the finale uh, kicker there uh, to, to talk about the um, future of mobility card game that he has uh, lined up for all of you. So next slide, please. Right, so this essentially covers a lot of the topics that um, we already tried to introduce uh, during our intro panel discussion where we know that uh, there's nothing more serious than transportation policy. There's reasons, more than a dozen reasons as to why that uh, is so true. And especially during the pandemic has come to light even more how we need to be creating uh, people oriented cities, increasing our access addre uh, and addressing um, inequities particularly in the United States, racial inequities. So we know that there are huge um, tasks ahead of us, uh, but we also wanna be able to, as Joe mentioned earlier, uh, be able to take these complex themes and really be able to make them approachable and uh, simple in the form of games and tools. So we're going to um, first kick off with uh, Street Mix. And I'll just have you go to the next slide, please. So Street Mix is a game that's been around for a couple of years now. It actually launched in 2013. And Numo ended up partnering with Street Mix to provide some support of essentially taking things to the next level as we were seeing uh, more disruption happening around uh, public space. There should be a video that starts playing. Um, Isabel, if you click the, the button in the center, but if, if that's not working, that's all right too. Uh, but essentially this is showing you um, kind of uh, the different types of modes uh, that we're not used to seeing. We're used to typically seeing um, uh, six lane uh, roads that are dedicated to cars and, uh, you know, just, about uh, the, the furthest away from where a lot of us are trying to work towards in achieving um, climate policy goals. Uh, so essentially, this is just a quick snapshot of 
the different users that are here um, in our game. I'll just have you uh, click to the next slide, please, Isabel. And yeah, just to take a moment to, to give you a little bit more of a rundown of what uh, Street Mix is about. It's essentially a game that, um, sorry, gives you the minimum expression of a street and it allows users to start thinking about the various forms of bringing in uh, different uh, modes to, uh, to that right of way. So you can have everything from bike lanes to bus lanes. And uh, we got a little bit playful at Numo as, we've no as we are known for um, to introduce a magic carpet as well. So you'll see all of this um, as we uh, start to play the game. I'll have, um, Folks, if you're able to uh, jump right in to the chat box, I will uh, share what is a before version. There you go. Jot's already a step ahead of me. Uh, but I think pretty much the best way without hyper-intellectualizing it, which I'm probably doing right now, is to just jump into the game and start playing around with it. Uh, see what uh, kind of street you think you can bring from what we describe at Numo as a hellscape in the beginning where all you're seeing is each lane um, uh, is being dominated by the car to a more joyful street where people have greater access and they're achieving their quality of life through safety and through healthy uh, forms of transport. Uh, so we'd love um, to have all of you uh, go ahead and click on this link and start to play around with the game. You can share this link back with me, um, back with all of us, I should say, in the chat box. Uh, it becomes automatically a unique link to you. Uh, so we'd love to also uh, showcase some of these links and some of these ideas um, that you're coming up with as you start to reconfigure and reimagine uh, these streets. On screen, far too many highways. Okay, I think that's heaven. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> yeah it depends on where you are coming from, but that's essentially what we're trying to get at: is that the the transportation policy and planning that exists today is so far from from meeting the needs of of people, and and we're seeing that that's being um, more and more amplified. Uh, in, in the recent months and the last year and a half, um, especially around how people are uh, mayors and decision makers are quickly uh, moving into action to reconfigure those, uh, those arteries of, of cities to better serve uh, people's mobility through um, biking, through uh, safer ways of, of walking and uh, micromobility as well. So if you all are able to jump in and start uh, playing with the game, that would be brilliant. And what we'll do is uh, after folks have a chance um, to share back, we'll, we'll wrap up each one of our games with some real world examples of how we applied this game out in the field and what results we were able to get um, when it comes to uh, helping shape policy. So um, just, just to clarify, we're all make changes on the, the link that you've sent and you want us, once we've made a change to send the link back to you? That's right. Okay. Mm -hmm. And yeah. we have like a minute or so, or? I believe we have a little bit more than that. We might okay. have um, a full five minutes, but it looks like Robin's already Robin's ready. really fast. With her. Just <laughs> super fast. So let's see, I can start. Beautiful. Let's see. I think, um, Isabel, if you're able to, to copy paste that link and share your screen, that might be easier than us um, 
switching on and off. And I should also share that this game has not only been used um, digitally, and it's been a tremendous sort of lifeline to be able to reach folks when we're not able to meet in person. Uh, but we're also, and, and this is sort of like the, the greatest success of a game is when you're able to be able to have this hybrid version where folks are using this game online, but they're also able to experience it in person. And I know that we've had um, uh, our events uh, set up a projector with the laptop and people just have uh, a total blast coming by and, and uh, you know, geeking out on just how many types of uh, other modes they're able to bring in um, to the game. So it's, it's both used in person and digitally. Let's see, Isabel, are you able to, to share your screen with the links that are being shared? Sorry, share my. That's right. So, well, maybe you could just stop screen sharing and then I can um, show the, yeah, perfect. Okay. So let's see. Okay, I believe this is uh, Robin's creation. And I so wish that we could hear the voices behind the creators, <laughs> uh, but you can visually see that uh, Robin has brought in um, bike lanes with as a food truck, uh, more pedestrian access and uh, bus lane as well. So that looks like a joyful street to me. Let's see if we can show another one. We have Martins. So I'll go ahead and. Oh, very cool. These are all. And this is sort of the, the fun of it all. We can't see that Martins you can yet. see. Yeah, so oh. apparently I have to do it each time is to <laughs> is to click on the new link. How about now? Mm -hmm. Ooh. Okay, yeah. So Martin's got light rail and bike lanes. You have trees for shade. Beautiful. I'd love to go to that street. Okay, maybe I'll take one more example. How are we doing for time, Joe? Because I could move us along and, and jump into you our next game. You you have about five more minutes. Okay, excellent. Because these are all taking very different shape and they are looking so nice. So let's see. Now this one's Leanne's. Wow, Leanne, beautiful. Also no bias towards the fact that Leanne is uh, from Numo. So we may have already uh, had a chance to, to play around with this game quite a bit. Uh, but you can see just how expansive um, the different modes are. We, we have yet to see a magic carpet though. And I, I would, and folks, we will share a few links at, towards the end of the session that uh, dives a little deeper into uh, the ideas and the concepts of, of bringing the elements like the magic carpet um, into Street Mix. Let's see here. So maybe people can also share in the chat what they enjoyed most about um, the game, if they came across any barriers or, or what was it, what was your thought process? You know, let's at least hear from you some way um, through the chat. And maybe if you've experienced these types of streets in, in certain cities, around the globe. Oh, wow. This one is also beautiful. Yeah, I was wondering what the scope would be to um, map. Oh, sorry. 
your connection is not very good. <laughs> Robin, it seems like the this is a um, that is a problem that we come across ourselves as well uh, to having to make those compromises. But really, really credit everyone for still um, dreaming and imagining big. And this one, I believe, is um, Jotes. So, Jotes, you can actually, you have the mic. So can you, <laughs> you do have a chance to, to sort of walk us through your thought process and why. Sure. I was thinking about um, the space outside my office that I don't go to very much anymore. And I was inspired by Pride Month. Um, so that has some definite visibility on my street. Um, but I love that uh, there's a big transit station near my office. There's a lot of bike share. Um, there are food trucks. Um, uh, there are not that many trees, which is what I've <laughs> shown over here. Clearly, my street needs more trees. <laughs> and I think I kind of got it to fit in, in the space. Um, but... Uh, the the space where my office is is also a big thoroughfare going towards um, a lot of big government buildings. Uh, so I don't know how happy people would be with only one car lane and, and no parking on the street. So it would make for some interesting discussions. Excellent. Thank you so much, Joe, and all the others that, that participated. I'll go ahead and wrap up this portion of uh, the game by showing showing some real world examples. Oh, right, good question. Who won? The jury's out. Maybe there's enough of us for for folks to say <laughs> which one which one they liked um, the most. I I do have to say, Leanne for me, um, a combination of Leanne and Jodes uh, was great. Yay! <laughs> All right, so without further ado, I'll just go ahead and have, um, I'll remove my screen share and Isabel, if you could pop the presentation back up so that I can have some closing slides of how we saw this all play out um, in, in a real world example. Okay, excellent. So this project actually took place uh, during the pandemic in Bogota, one of our um, colleagues and senior advisor, Carlos Pardo, who is also the genius behind um, coming up with the games uh, that, that we're talking about today, particularly Mo Mobility, uh, but he was also uh, instrumental in helping uh, Street Mix think um, more broadly about the different kinds of uh, modes that could be brought into their um, existing game. But, I'll just quickly share um, that Street Mix was used as an avenue for uh, public engagement uh, during, as you all recall, a very precarious time where decisions are still being made. Um, big decisions have to be made around the reconfiguration of streets. And uh, uh, the, the mayor um, herself, uh, Claudia Lopez in, in Bogota, wanted to make uh, this uh, opportunity to, to reimagine a uh, green corridor, which is uh, one of the most important streets that runs through Bogota and hits about every socioeconomic level. So when you're representing a city of 9 million people and you're talking about one of the most essential streets that, that runs through um, the heart of the city, you also need to be considering despite all of the other barriers and challenges of being able to do public engagement in person, uh, what can we end up uh, providing as a tool uh, to, to still get uh, folks to be able to think about um, the use of public space? Uh, so th these were the results in just a few weeks, um, uh, about 7,000 proposals were submitted. And that to date is, is one of the highest that, that we've uh, seen. Uh, and, and also a huge nod uh, to showing the, the importance and the significance of having um, tools like this that are um, agile and adaptable to whatever circumstances are going on in, in cities at the time. So next slide, please. These are just a few of the results um, that came from 
um, how uh, people were starting to think about uh, reshaping um, Septima Verde, the green corridor. And you'll see here that there was an increase in demand around um, having more space for biking, for skateboards. Uh, public transit was a huge one. I should note that um, this looked a lot like the before uh, image that you all just worked with, uh, Street Mix. So essentially six lanes of cars. And it had, as you can imagine, become a bottleneck as well in the city over, uh, over the last few decades. So just a, an amazing thing to be able to see um, what people are thinking about uh, this space, uh, even if it meant that they had to give up um, taking a car trip, uh, what, what other modes are they willing to explore at this time? So next slide, please. This just gives a snapshot of, of what, it, uh, what were a few of the proposals. And finally, I'll just show um, a recent Reuters article that uh, in the next slide, please, Isabel, uh, of how, um, just how impactful uh, using uh, this uh, form of uh, game tool uh, to, to help the city not only sort of bridge the divide around uh, gathering public input uh, during a really critical time where they were really uh, trying to solicit feedback to help inform um, shaping the future of the city, but showing the value of using um, games uh, and, uh, you know, uh, uh, tools, excuse me, uh, such as Street Mix to help sort of at least gather the data, gather um, the type of um, feedback that can then help shape and inform uh, public policy. And we'll, we'll dive into more of what that all means at, towards the end of the session. Uh, Shafak, there's a quick clarifying question from sure. for you from uh, Floor. I hope I'm pronouncing that correct. Um, what are the challenges for Street Mix? Is it only to be played as an individual or can it be played in teams? I believe they can be played both as individual and in groups as well. Uh, but typically, you know, it, it really depends on the project itself. Um, I can imagine a scenario where there might be a um, community-based organization that is critical in a um, city that represents, uh, for example, underserved populations, and they themselves um, sort of are charged to be the ones that come up with the proposal. So they can work together as a team and submit that proposal representing um, themselves as one stakeholder. At the same time, as the way that it was um, deployed and used in um, Bogota, people can be able to um, access it themselves and uh, submit individual proposals. So with that, I'm going to pass it on to Jot to get started with uh, Mo Mobility. Okay, great. So on to game number two. Uh, could you advance the slide, please? So this is a card game, um, and I'm going to talk you through uh, just a quick introduction to the game, uh, and then we'll have a chance to play a modified version um, because you all can't share your screens. So basically, this is a game that was designed completely by Numo, uh, uh, by Robin Chase and Carlos Pardo, with input from many, many uh, people. Uh, it's a, I find that it's a really fun and engaging game. Um, and the goals are to create awareness and to spark a discussion among stakeholders. Um, the, I think of this game as a game to convince others that your idea is the idea that is worth winning. So it's almost like a pitching contest in how it's played. Um, so essentially to, to play the game, players get cards that represent ideas for creating sustainable, equitable, um, and joyful cities. Um, and they get cards that um, represent mechanisms through which that can be done. Uh, and without going into too much more detail, there's a judge um, who chooses the goal that folks are working towards. Uh, people get a, a, a hand of cards. 
uh, and you're choosing from within the options that you have in your hand, which is very much like real life, our options are limited. <laughs> um, you're choosing the best option to try to meet that goal. Uh, so um, if you could advance the slide, thank you. Uh, we've, we've played this game both digitally and uh, in, in person. Um, you know, COVID-19 definitely posed a challenge with a card game and how to move it into the virtual space, but, but we have done that as well. Um, and uh, we've translated the game uh, into two languages, English and Spanish. So I'll be putting the links uh, into, um, into the chat box uh, in a moment. Um, but first, um, let's get into actually playing the game. So I'm going to, and this is a modified version of the game, I am going to paste for you here a link that I'd love for you all to open. Um, and this is the uh, the, the printing, the, the deck for, for anyone to be able to print out. Um, and what I want you to do is to scroll down to slide four or page four. All right. Uh, so judges, can you nod for me when you've done that so I have a sense? This is working for people? Okay, so uh, the three of us are the judges for this game, uh, and we're going to choose a first goal for all of you to try to hit. Um, and I'm going to take the first goal as utopia. So your goal is going to be to create uh, a city uh, or, or to, go, to move towards utopia. You're then going to go ahead to page eight. On page eight. All right, cool. Thanks, James. Um, okay, and so this is the hand that you all have been dealt virtually. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you about a minute to read through these options that you got in this um, hand that you've been dealt. Uh, and then what we'd love for you to do is to type in the chat which mechanism you would pick to try to get uh, towards utopia. Yeah, that's fine, Robin. If you all want to scroll down to another page and take a look at other uh, idea cards, that's that works as well. Quite a lot to choose from. <laughs> it's a lot. <laughs> so you want to basically pick from the pages that have the light blue cards. Okay, so feel free to type in um, the card that you think would win. And if you have any explanation, any pitch around why that card should win, that might help your case. Okay, so let's see what we have. Um, roller skates, because, well, there's no explanation needed. Roller skates and utopia, that's clearly a very obvious connection that does not need to be explained. <laughs> um, applaud shared mobility users. Uh, and why is this utopic? Because people on the street all value the fact that you aren't using your car. Um, 
Madeline's cheating a bit and has a second entry, though I don't know if it's from a card. It probably is. Also eliminating left turns. Leanne has unleashed public space. Uh, Shafak has children-led street design, because if you make it safe for children, it's safe for everyone. Uh, and then, oh, okay. All right. Okay, so judges, what do you think? As we're going for Utopia, we have you know, limited budget. We have limited goodwill or political will. We have lots of limitations. Uh, but these ideas are really great and, and just quite different from what we've heard before. So what do you think? Who wins? Might just be Madeline for her persistence and just how many TikTok videos came out around roller skates uh, shows its full potential in the public sphere. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I vote for uh, for Madeline's. <laughs> All right, great. So, uh, I, suppose, I suppose for me, uh, on the one hand, children, you know, children-led street design is, yeah, exactly everything which we as policymakers should be doing. But on the other hand, roller skating is roller skating, and I'm I'm sorry, yeah, I'm I'm gonna have to sign with roller skating. It, it, sorry, it, it, it can't be. We can have kids roller skating if we have a children brilliant. roller That's skating. Amazing. We've we've nailed it. I think we can then sort of build in the fact that people are appreciating these kids who are roller skating, and these are clearly shared roller skates. <laughs> All right, so this is a good example how decision making is sometimes not always very logical and like in a box based on certain criteria, but based on like what things make what it makes people feel. So I think we have maybe another minute to do another quick round of this. Yes, co judges. Okay, um, so next I'm going to switch it around and make the goal dystopia. So I want you to pitch your best idea for dystopia. Yep, if you go through the cards, you'll be able to see some, albeit it's a little harder, but this is where it requires you to be creative. Just responding to Leanne's question. Okay, um, so as other folks are coming in with their ideas, we have drones for transport. Um, any thoughts on that, Shafak James? What do you think? Big contentious area and delivery. Um, and singing in the rain. Some people are terrible singers and it would be horrible walking down the street listening to this. I will, I'm going to I'm going to pick a card. It's actually on page 14, which is mandatory helmets for pedestrians. Ah, cancel public transport. All right. <laughs> really some very good ideas coming out of this. Okay. Uh, so that just sort of gives you a sense of what sort of cards um, are in this deck. Um, you know, feel free to go through these. Uh, they're pretty simple to print out as well. Um, uh, but let's go back to the slide deck. Um, could you move to the next slide, please, Isabel? Okay. All right. So, uh, so just to recap, uh, you have goal cards in this game, um, and you can see that it's got a mix of. Sorry, the screen is so small. I can't even see it. Um, healthy, zero carbon, cheap. Um, politically viable, affordable, 
all um, all very real considerations uh, for um, uh, for for how um, how we're making real world decisions, um, and maybe uh, just to quickly share our experience, we've used this game to start. Um, pretty serious uh, multi-day workshops in cities where we're bringing together stakeholders and, and various folks from communities um, to, um, to discuss, you know, sometimes uh, contentious topics like the use of space. Um, you know, there's a paucity of space. Um, there's a, a big uh, need for uh, or a perceived need for, for parking space. Uh, but also for, for people. And so what we found is that by starting off um, these workshops, playing this game sort of allows people to get into a little bit of a fun mode, a little bit of a competitive spirit, but be able to hold sort of that real world complexity in their heads while they play this game. And we found that it's 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 a good icebreaker. Uh, it's also really nice at at opening your mind to like ideas beyond maybe some preconceived ideas that you might have come into the room with. Um, as you can see, like the idea cards are pretty varied. Um, and uh, yeah, I think uh, I think that's it from me. I'm aware of the time. Um, uh, if you have any questions about uh, Mo Mobility, uh, let me know. I'm going to go ahead and put the link uh, to the game uh, in, in the chat. Thank you. Thank you, Yacht. Um, wow, how, how, can I, how can I follow in that uh, double act like that? Um, I suppose just by dem demonstrating and getting people to participate in, in the future mobility card game. So... I was going to um, to share some slides, but for some reason, it's um, my my internet connection appears to crash whenever I try and try and sl share slides. So um, I'm I'm going to have to freewheel it a, a little bit, which is coming in keeping with the game ethos, I think. So uh, what I'm going to introduce for everybody is what we'll call the future mobility card game. Um, so where this really kind of came about was I we were doing some work as part of um the basic part of some scenario planning for exercise with like a series of people um public come public sector organizations here in the UK and obviously in Europe. So people like Transport for London, people on um so city region of Brussels and Amsterdam as well. And we were running this what we call future mobility scenario game, which we would have been playing actually you know, if we were come here in real in real life. Um, where following the scenario creation process, you're then able to take people through like a lived experience of, of that scenario from different uh, perspectives. And so, what we then did as a result of of feedback from from that session is we then created a card game which could be. Uh, played can kind of re played really quickly. It could um, also be transported really easily, but also be adapted to the different needs of different people. Um, so, what the kind of the aim of the card game is to enable you basically allows you to put yourself in the situation of a persona who is is kind of chosen at random, and you're asked to meet a certain uh, mobility mobility ch mobility challenge. Um, so it could be the future mobility challenge, could be anything. It could be, um, and there's kind of a range of different challenges which are included as part of the, because part of the game itself. Um, ah, brilliant. Thank you, Isabel. Um, yeah, if you could click on to the next slide, please. And what's the core of this? There's three types of cards. So firstly, you get a challenge card. So what this states is that this is what the future mobility challenge that all participants in this game must tackle. You then get an action card, which is this is this is the action which you then as a player must meet in order to meet this challenge. And then you get a persona card. So this is the persona which each player must play. Uh, and this could be anybody. Um, it's completely random, completely random set. So it could be from you know from the prime minister, all the way down to a member of a local rock band, 
for instance, and it really starts to kind of get creative juices flowing. I should also then say it, you can actually you actually download blank versions of the game as well, so you can then create your own cards and create your own challenges. Um, if you able to click on to the next slide, please, uh, Isabel. Um, so the way it works is that each player takes from the pack one person, one uh, persona card and one challenge card. So these are yours to use and can use as you see, use as you see fit and to be creative as you see fit. Also, but everybody who's participating in the game there is dealt one challenge card. So everybody is working towards the same challenge, but everybody has a different persona, they have a different action and they have um but they every person every so every person has a different persona and different action to meet that challenge but everybody's working on a common challenge so you then have one minute to come up with a story so it's fundamentally about how you as that persona would meet that challenge using the action you've been given and you can be creative it can you can you be as creative as you possibly can and then at the end of the minute, you then share your stories with the group. And then what then really comes next after that is um, you then have a discussion about how all of your different personas and how, how you use different things, how you use different actions, how you use different aspects of that persona to be able to meet that challenge. And then you can have a discussion about, well, okay, what does this then actually mean for actually delivering these things in, re in real life? And so you can just then have a discussion amongst yourselves as a group, and this can be done online, and obviously this can be done in person. So uh, I believe that that's come, that's the explanation just how it works. Um, Isabel, would you be able to stop sharing your screen because we're actually going to run a session um, with yourselves now? Um, so in front of me, and I'm, I'm hoping that can everybody see that? So I'll move the mouse out of the way. Can everybody see these cards? Yes, but I, I can't read it. Ah, right. Okay. Um, Do we need to read them? It would be useful, but I'll, <laughs> I'll, I'll read them aloud in any case. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to share a challenge, which you're all which you're all going to um, meet, but also a persona and an action which I want you all to take on. So. I have no idea what's in these. I, I do have no what's in these decks, by the way, but I have no idea what order. So it could come out and be anything, frankly. <laughs> um, so the challenge you have: ooh. all cars are banned from city centres. So it, it's it's a complete ban. Ah, brilliant! There we go. Um, all cars are completely banned from the city centre. It could be your own city, or it could be another city. That's the challenge which you have to meet. Action. Wow, okay, this will be fun. Um, it's create a new commercial service. So whatever the persona is, you have to be able to create a service which ultimately looks to make money as a result of this challenge, okay? Final one, final one, um, persona. Disability advocate. So obviously this could be anybody who um, advocates for uh, the rights of, of um, people with particular disabilities. Um, so what I'm going to ask you to do now is acting as this person, a disability advocate, want you to be able to come up with a new service, new commercial service, which meets this challenge, which you have been posed. And you have a minute or so, you have a minute or so to think about it. And then what I want you to do after that is share your story in the chat. And then my, myself, Yot and, and Shafak will, will have a little discussion and um, consider which one of yours is particularly good. So that's the, that's the, the hand you've been dealt. And I do apologise now. I can't actually see what's what's in what's in the chat because um, I've had to lower my camera. Hmm. 
I can monitor the chat for you, James. Fantastic. I comment. I was kind of hoping the prime minister would come out. That would be that would be very fun. <laughs> Again, I do apologise for the sounds of the trains going past. <laughs> oh, I thought intentional. <laughs> oh no, no. Um, <laughs> because we're playing a transport game. <laughs> I wish I, I'd hope so. Well, I, I wish it was. Um, yes, we have a lot. Of, unfortunately, I live next to a busy railway, so. <laughs> so we have two ideas, James. Um, cool. So. Robin says, because there are no longer any cars in the city center, which is absolutely great for people with disabilities, my new business will be using cargo bikes to do deliveries instead of cars. P.S. We will also have light, low-speed vehicles for those disabled who need motorized access. Um, and then Leanne says, on-demand cargo bike errand runners who are made up of local students, young people to make deliveries of goods, services, food, medicine. And Pedro has one, shopping pickup and deliveries using AV lockers. So people with motor, sensory, or cognitive limitations, which include seniors, et cetera, can purchase and visit at local shops. Um, and Pedro's also made an offer to sell his company to Robin or anyone else or, or to buy shares in Hertz. So <laughs> there we go. Very, very enterprising. I'm, I'm kind of, I'm quite interested that nobody can men mentioned in their comments you know whether or not they're actually advocating for particular types of disabilities but um mm. yeah but cool what do we think though what do we think of them are there any which stick out mm. i got I do, I do like cargo bikes um but then that just narrows it down to two doesn't it <laughs> <laughs> have a bias towards cargo bikes too because i just heard a whole presentation around it so really seeing the use of that the the benefit of having it very true yeah. should we say everyone's a winner on this one everyone's a winner <laughs> I so. I yes so. um i'm not sure so, how we do so i would have to add like one more piece to the city center um you know, considering what material is used for pavements and what material is used for streets to allow people with maybe limited mobility be, to be able to move on them easily, I think would be critical as part of the city center plan. Very true, especially in historic city centers. Um, mm -hmm. Cobblestones. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, very much so. I like that. Do we have uh, enough time for another just one minute? Mm -hmm. okay. Yes. I'm going to let's do another I'm, round. I'm going to try again, see if this works. And actually, geek to see physical cards right now <laughs> yeah, introduced in our session. So, All right, I'm going to leave. Cool. Okay. Okay. So, the challenge is um, so we spoke about cities. In this one, it is harder for rural residents to use transport services. Either they become less frequent or uh, that sort of cut back or um, there's less public transport it, it generally just becomes more difficult for them to get around and live their daily lives um in if you live in a rural area um and i know there are different types of rural areas so uh, i'll just say use your imagination <laughs> um so what we want you to do is to launch a political campaign see if you can start influencing a few decision makers 
Okay. Um, so this one, I think this one actually came up in the run through. So um, it's come up again. Is um, a professor at a local university. So if you were a professor at a local university, a professor in anything, how would you launch a political campaign to overcome the challenge that it's more difficult for rural residents to get around? Very much appreciate your thoughts and your stories. Okay, James, so we have a few um, items in the chat box. Fantastic. Do you, want to, do you want me to read them out? Yeah, let's go. All right. So advocate for an integra integrated metropolitan control of transport services for better efficiencies and microtransit for rural areas. Okay. Um, and so, and then... Professor has clearly done their research and realizes that 50% of all trips are less than five kilometers and that 50% of all people don't have a driver's license or even access to a car. Uh, he starts advocating for a walk-bike freedom network. Yeah, so those are, those are two ideas. We already have a vote. Pedro is voting for Robin. <laughs> I'll probably second that one. That that sounds that sounds like a basis for a really good idea. Mm -hmm. I love the name Freedom Network. Give it a bit of branding. Amazing. Yeah. But at the same time, it int integrated um, municipal control transport systems. Um, being in, living in the UK, where we obviously have a very deregulated bus network, I, I very much look forward to that. <laughs> cool. Um, so what I'm, well, thank, thank you all for coming, for those, those amazing ideas. So what I'm just going to um, do is just to have a quick summary of kind of the lessons which we lessons learned. Um, Isabel, if you're able to be able to get the slides up, that's okay. Also, sorry, Isabel has a suggestion, James. Cool. A uh, game where students have to make it back to the city center from a nearby village using only public transport. First group wins. Brilliant. And that that's that reminds me. So, um, um how, how many of you have seen the uh, the British TV show uh, Top Gear? Mm -hmm. Um, it reminds me of that reminds me of like, those races which they used to do, but you know, without the car. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Um, so, okay, yep. So, in in terms of in terms of the practice of actually delivering the game, um, where this where this game has actually been really useful is to stimulate thinking very early on in the in the policy cycle. Policy cycle. So, um, you know, when you're you're starting to come establish what values and beliefs you're. Uh, Basing a strategy upon, you're doing the knowledge and development, and you're doing some engagement. It's been really good at kind of breaking down barriers and breaking down um, siloed, think siloed thinking uh, through come through playing that game. So whether it be challenging, uh, particularly controversial uh, conventional thinking, whether it be seeing the future through the eyes of others, or kind of encouraging stakeholders to think differently about the ideas. And what's been really interesting as we've Come kind of done different versions of the game for different audiences is how they've all applied it to come in in a slightly different way so when we were like working with um when i was working with startups on on this they'll think about it much more obviously from a business planning perspective and trying to understand their customers better and so that then really challenged their knowledge and their analysis on what they can what their customers for whereas 
for the city authorities, it was very much challenge, much more challenging their values and challenging um, come their their very traditional approach to transport to transport planning. I've got to admit that this game is yet to be um, deployed more like later on in the policy cycle. Are you you're actually developing the policy and you're actually assessing its implications and impacts? But it's been I'm really interested to see how it's been applied very early on and uh, perhaps in, in the formulation stage. Um, Isabel, could you click on the next slide, please? Thank you. Um, of course, remember I do remember a time when we actually played games together, you know, it's, um, and it has come a few examples of, of come here in the UK where we actually come play different versions of the card game as well as come along the alongside scenario game. Um, done it with a variety of different audiences. So um, it likes to transport for London, City of Amsterdam, uh, Brussels, um, Brussels City region and others as well. But let's, let's come to selection. And then I believe the final, there's a final slide now, Isabel. Um, and all in all, we've actually played 15 different versions of the game. So before obviously the pandemic started, um, we actually managed to come road test this version of the game 15 times with 15 different audiences. I mean, we had a total of 153, 133 participants from a variety of sectors. So um, that's ranged from, yeah, obviously, come public policy, startups, but also uh, from voluntary communities and obviously in engaging with uh, local citizens, local citizens as well. Although I've got to admit, come the primary audience has been much more uh, come internal. You could internally, you could say to the uh, to the client or to, to whoever's playing it. But what's actually been most amazing is the fact it's been downloaded fifteen hundred times. Um, I would admit I never never quite expected that. Um, so yeah, that obviously there's kind of been a great appetite for the game, and one of the kind of key lessons which we've we really learned from we really learned from it was. Actually, you know, it's actually that value of breaking down the yeah you know, breaking down the barriers to um, yeah kind of, what's that, yeah breaking ugh, my apologies breaking down the the barriers to thinking about policy making in a slightly different way and thinking about understanding its impacts in different ways. So when we've come had discussions with with city authorities. Um, about the imp impacts of this game, what they've actually said was, well, okay, it was a nice fun activity to do, but what it then meant was we then saw our policy making through a different light. And so when we're trying to understand its impact, we are looking at things like, you know, how is it then impacting upon, you know, uh, dis uh, people with dis uh, disabilities and looking at it in a much more granular level or how it's how's it impacting upon women how's it impacted upon all these different audiences which we didn't think about because um they tend to can we used to tend to um think about them the users in a homogenous group or commuters and everybody else which used to be another another one so yeah that that's kind of that, that that's really my my presentation so um yeah isabel and yeah, obviously Stop sharing the screen now. Um, so, uh, yeah, in fact, I'm, I'm just kind of really into. Also, I'm really interested in obviously come what what are your come what you have been what's been your reflections and also come what's been your feedback from players who've played the game. But also for for everybody here today, please feel free to share in the chat your reflections on just on playing these games and what sort of value which you could also also see from them. But um, yes, in fact, you're, I'm, I'm just interested in what feedback you've had from players. Sure. So we had a chance to use Mo Mobility um, card game very early on in one of our pilot cities. Um, we... Uh, we were working uh, with the city of Pittsburgh uh, to help uh, form what's called the Pittsburgh Mobility Collective. And when the city and all the various stakeholders from the public sector, private sector, uh, academia, and a few nonprofits sat together um, at an in-person workshop, uh, we, we thought what better opportunity than to kick off um, this uh, sort of uh, mixture of 
various different perspectives, various different motivations. And with the, with the workshop called an ambition workshop, why not insert and, and kick off um, how we, we really address and approach uh, some of the uh, transportation challenges that the city is currently facing and try to get various uh, you know, actors uh, that will be providing a new suite of mobility options in the city to sort of come together and, and, and think about it in a whole new way. So we, at that time, ended up having uh, a brilliant uh, session where uh, those card games were played. Uh, it, you know, it, Ice, Icebreaker is kind of um, a watered down uh, term to use because as you've all experienced now with the way that this sort of challenges your mind to think more creatively and to be sitting at the table uh, as, if you could picture yourself sitting with people that are um, coming from very different interests, uh, trying to arrive at, at similar goals, uh, the depth of conversation and discussion also gets amplified, uh, even if the, the teasers are in a playful way, like the ideas that were presented, the goals that were presented. Uh, so, it, you know, you might be entering uh, the discussion in a more lighthearted way so that people can be more imaginative. But then as you're starting to get into it, you're saying, OK, what does this actually mean? And uh, who would really be the person that would be leading uh, this type of, um, uh, you know, action if, if we were to arrive at it? So that's just one example of how we applied that game in one of the pilot cities we've worked with. That's right. And as Robin is saying, um, people were laughing and humanized. Uh, so, you know, it kind of brings the air out uh, in the room, so to speak, you know, and it, it, if you think about um, having all of these different stakeholders in the room, that's, that's our bread and butter. We love doing that at NUMO, creating those third spaces um, for folks that don't typically sit and talk to each other. Uh, and, you know, what better way than, than introduce games into the process? I think also from just this small um, experience we had today of, of these three games, these three tools, what stands out for me always is that you you get a you get a glimpse of people's how people's approaches are different. And I don't mean only in terms of like what idea they're articulating, but even in the manner that they articulate it, right? Um, and I think that the value of doing that, especially when playing with, with people that you need to collaborate with, but who you're not meeting on a day-to-day -day basis or who you might be meeting for the first time, I think that has, um, that has, you know, that has a lot of value that's not always like e easily captured. Um, but I think one of the comments said it, that you could almost feel it in the air of that room or of that virtual space. Um, and that's something that always stands out for me um, whenever we play any of these games. I just quickly wanted to raise up a um, comment around the fact that there are um, sort of, a, there's a structure in place. So we know that even if we're all um, coming at this game from various different motivations and uh, agendas, so to speak, we all have to sort of follow the rules of the game and that gives a sense of ease to people that are playing and participating in it to take that risk, to start thinking more bold, boldly around it um, and, and really imagining what's, what's possible. Mm -hmm. And Pedro's asking, where can we find your game, James? Ah, yes, so the um, to link I will share in just one moment. Um, so you, you can just then come download it from, from the website. Um, so in fact, I've been actually building, um, yeah, thanks, Yacht, brilliant. Um, so I think building upon that, what's come kind of amazed me is people come approach problems in different ways and they, both in terms of kind of developing a solution, but also in terms of exploring the problems. And one of the great things about games, whether it be just the, the ones which we've demonstrated, um, but also for even for other games is that it allows people to obviously within the confines of the rules to address the problem in their own way 
and to think about things in their own way and to not in some respects can be bound by a process which we need bound by a process which we necessarily need to achieve a set outcome um and so it, it then come, comes into something which pedro said which is around it breaks down that inertia to thinking creatively because again the come as a policymaker you just then think well okay i i want to become creative in in my solutions but at the same time i've got to think about this options appraisal process i've got to think about this business case process and it then really that starts to limit your thinking and limits to it can un unconsciously limits it to what's um what's possible or kind of what's feasible within that context but games are just a great way of just allowing us to be creative and we we can all play games it it, it is it is so accessible and it's it's really freeing and just having that as part of a policy making process is it's really liberating it gets people to to think about things differently it, it's um but sometimes some people are afraid to think differently and mm -hmm. it's um it obviously that will be come an overcoming challenge i'm I'm actually just interested if i can you um what's been the most unusual example of someone playing the game you know how like how they like played it in a way which you did not see did not see whatever happens well i have an idea of how i might play your game james in a way that at least you didn't explain it to us and maybe You've already seen this happen before, but picking up on Shafak's comment earlier about acknowledging that there's a place to acknowledge historical inequities um, and how infrastructure and policy have made it dif difficult, maybe understatement, for certain groups of people to access jobs, to access you know things in life. And I'm as I'm thinking about your game, I think that you could almost describe certain neighborhoods or certain commercial areas as who it doesn't work for or who it works for with your persona cards, right? This works for this, 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 and it doesn't work for other people because of these challenges, mm -hmm. right? Um, that, so I'm, I'm not sure if that's the most creative uh, um, answer to your question, but that was sort of coming up in mind that you could almost like have a photograph of that, I don't know, intersection or or that bus route or, or whatever it might be and, and talk about, well, what design perspective does this um, shout out to and whose perspectives aren't being incorporated and what are the challenges that they would, um, that they would see, so yeah. I love the way that you're describing it, Joe, because it's my, the wheels are turning around the perspectives piece that James is talking about and um, and also the lived experiences and what you brought up at the start of the session, which was storytelling, right? And Robin talking about humanizing, when we think about all of those elements, really games can serve as a vehicle to bring uh, faces and experiences um, to actuality and instead of looking at them through the lens of statistics, right? We all, especially all of those that are involved in transportation policy and are very passionate about making cities more equitable places, uh, what sort of tools and vehicles can we bring people to together, uh, sorry, together to the table um, and, and start deconstructing that by authentically listening, right? And hearing that someone's perspective and someone's experience, um, whole subset groups of populations have potentially experienced um, things in a very inequitable way. And there's a more sense of urgency around that. So I, I think that these games and tools really allow to help connect the dots on these larger, more complex um, challenges we're facing in cities. Um, I suppose just really come back upon that. And also, again, perhaps a bit of feedback from, from my mobility, which is I've, I've played and is, is, a great, is a great game, is that they're really, it's really actually good at also looking at, at identifying what you don't know as mm -hmm. well because um and i actually just had what this one i think it was one one person when i played the game at, at um with the city's team at uber um they said 
literally their the feedback to I can't remember what the challenge was to be honest. Um, but this challenge and this person was and this actually said, well, I, I don't know how to do this to be honest. I I don't know what this person's lived experience is. I don't know whether or not this action will actually be useful for them or be within their tool set to actually mm. do. But rather than start leave it there, what she then actually did was after the session, um, she was like, just doing some research and just saying, well, okay, well, what is their, what their experience? Would they then have access to these tools to meet this challenge? And then like, came back to me the next day and said, well, you know what? I just kind of did a bit, did a bit of research and I actually found there was, they could use this technology in order to meet this challenge. And so this is kind of what I do. So it actually kind of spurred people to think about what they don't actually know and then spur them to find out about it and yeah. how they can then fill that how they can then fill that gap and that's actually a really interesting kind of unex, un, unintended outcome of the game i guess it, it's um yeah just identifying what you don't know as much as what you do know <laughs> mm -hmm. and sort of living through those thoughts and processes as the game continues to to take shape Definitely so, definitely. Um, so do you want to, Shifak, is there any, um, any comments or um, any, any further questions which are coming, um, yeah, which are coming up at all? Um, I think I just want to reflect on Pedro's comments about, you know, that, that experience that all of us, many of us have had of, of he's saying a daily diet of boring and don't pee on my jurisdiction. Um, and you know how, oh, done that, tried that, don't even attempt it, doesn't work, will fail, uh, you know, that that is sort of a reality of uh, sometimes uh, the spaces that we work in and that how it sort of does chip away <laughs> at your morale or, or maybe, you know, just <laughs> overall mental health. Um, and that I, I think uh, the session has been fun to, it's, it's been a fun discussion with you all because I think it, it brings some ideas of how to how to change that even in small ways thank you thank you um so we have just about a minute left so i, I suggest we're going to we wrap up there so firstly thank you everybody for taking part in the session it's actually been chat just keep on going keep on going it's it's been amazing it's been amazing and obviously been amazing and fun to play the games um so um Obviously, if, if you want to kind of ask any further questions about the games or any um, want to follow anything up, so firstly you can actually directly directly message us through the through Hopin, which is in the top right hand side. You can send a direct message direct message to us. Um, I also believe we'll be sharing our sharing our contact details as well. Um, yep, yeah, and similar for me, if you want to come kind of want want to see have a version of the game um, of, of our game, then so please feel free to. In terms of when the sessions um, start, sessions start tomorrow. So it's just a reminder that multi this is a multi-day event, and so I believe the session tomorrow they start at it's a nine thirty Central European Standard Time, um, and we we'll have uh, lots of um, interesting sessions tomorrow on um, how you then take uh, experiments towards system change on what the future public spaces could look like. And many, many other interesting sessions. I dare say, not quite as fun as ours, but um, <laughs> I'm sure they're, they're brilliant. brilliant it's probably all the same. Um, but I just wanted to, well, I just wanted to say thank you all very much. It's been an absolutely great session. It's been brilliant. Uh, fucking you have been absolutely brilliant as well. Um, and just to say uh, good evening or good day or what, what, whatever time it is in, in your area. So thank you all very much.